Welcome to another episode of the Understanding Crypto series by Thomas Plunkett. Today, we're going to continue on with our discussion of Solidity smart contract anti-patterns. You know, patterns you should not follow to keep your uh, smart contracts secure. And so we're going to talk about uh, attacks that are based on how default visibility works in Solidity programming language. Uh, just a reminder, this video and these slides are available on Creative Commons license. All right, so um, and this is, you know, this is something that has caused people to lose a real amount of money. Uh, in fact, uh, default visibility hacks and attacks or vulnerabilities uh, have cost a lot of money to be stolen. Uh, one example is the uh, first parity wallet multi-signature hack. Uh, about $30 million worth of Ethereum was stolen from three wallets. And you can take a look at um, Free Code Camp, which has a story about how it actually happened. Um, and it was about $180 million that were vulnerable. But as soon as people saw that um, the evil hacker was stealing money, some good folks uh, you know, penetrated the other at-risk wallets and stole all the money from that and then returned it to the owners later. Um, and so that, that's actually a very common pattern in uh, white for white hat hackers to uh, duplicate a hack to make sure that uh, all the vulnerable money is uh, fully removed from its spot, its, 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 its vulnerable location before the evil hackers can get a hold of it. The same thing happened with the DAO hack that we talked about a, a little while ago. Uh, about two thirds of the money in that case was uh, actually grabbed by white hat hackers and one third was uh, grabbed by the evil hacker. In this case, uh, the white hacks hacked uh, five, six of the accounts. Um, so let's talk in general about what we're talking about here. You know, we talked about the fact that, you know, there's a lot of money that was stolen, but how, how do you defend against this? What's the real vulnerability? Well, okay, so functions in Solidity have visibility specifiers to dictate how they're called you know, public, private, and so on. Um, the visibility determines whether a function can be called externally by users, by contracts that extend from this contract, uh, whether uh, it can only be called internally or only externally. Um, and so we talked about the visibility specifiers previously, so I'm not gonna go into details, but the default visibility uh, for functions is public. So a function that doesn't specify its visibility is going to be public and will be callable by external users. Um, and so the issue arrives when a developer mistakenly emits a visibility specifier in a function that should be private or only internally available, and that can give, lead to a devastating vulnerability. So here's an example of a very basic contract that shows us this vulnerability. We've got uh, to win the uh, amount of money, um, a user has to generate an Ethereum address whose last eight hex characters are zero. It's kind of like having a, the winning lottery ticket. In this case, the winning lottery ticket is an Ethereum address whose eight hex characters are zero. Once, it, once uh, you've created that address, you can call the withdrawal winning, winnings uh, function to obtain the money. So let's read through what the code does, and then we'll talk about the vulnerability. So we got this contract hash for ether. We got function withdrawal winnings over here, and you're gonna be the winner if your address, if its last eight characters are zero. So what do they do here? So we've got a message sender that's gonna be the address of the person who calls this withdrawal winnings function. We are going to cast this address into an unsigned integer of 32 uh, bits. Uh, basically, so we'll have our, our last eight hex characters equal to zero. Okay, because uh, remember, think about it, a uh, hex character is four bits, and so eight hex characters would be an unsigned integer of size 32. Um, and um, now the addresses are larger than 32 bits, but when you cast something here explicitly, you cut off all the remainder of the information. So we cut off all the pre pre uh, previous characters in the address. All we care about is those last eight characters are zero. Now, 
if we think about it, uh, there should be addresses out there that have a last eight x character zero, but it's going to be something like the uh, 16 to the power of eight. So it's not very many addresses, you know, it, it's, it's, um, you know, one in a billion or something like that. One in a billion addresses are equal, are going to satisfy this. All right. So what this function does, it says, uh, we require that your address is uh, the last eight characters are equal to zero. If it is, we're going to call the function send winnings. Now we put a little underscore in front of send winnings because it's intended that this send winnings function is a helper function. That is, we don't want people calling this other than this function we call winnings. We've got function send winnings, message sender, you know, that's the address that's hopefully is equal to zero. Uh, transfer um, this dot balance, all the money in the contract. Okay. That's the cool, that's how this contract is supposed to work. The problem is, is they did not put private in front of this function send winnings. Instead, they just left it blank there and blanks means it's public. So if someone wants all the ether in this contract, all they have to do is call send winnings and it, it sends the winnings to the sender, whoever called this function, all the balance of the contract. So this contract just gives money away. Uh, if someone calls send winnings, and we never test to see if they actually had an address that began with uh, that ended in eight zeros to have that one in a billion address that you could pay the ETH. So that's an example of how a helper function that should have been private uh, because its default visibility is public meant that it was vulnerable to being hacked. So let's talk about how we can prevent this. So it's a best practice to always specify the visibility of all functions in a smart contract, even if those functions are intentionally public. Um, furthermore, recent versions of the Solidity compilers will show a warning message for functions that have no explicit visibility set to encourage this practice. So tune in next time when we will continue on with the Understanding Crypto series by Thomas Plunkett, and we'll take a look at some additional um, aspects of Solidity.